Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, this is going to be the beginning of our book that we're going to be reading called Hero. It is by Jennifer Lee Schatz. Okay, Hero. We started reading this actually in our after school program and the kids just loved it. So what I'm going to do is read a couple chapters every day. All the chapters will be available on my YouTube channel. So if you have additional students at home that would like to listen, feel free to click on them at any time. It is not a problem. We would love the more the merrier. Okay? Hero. Prologue. Hero sat perfectly still on the auditorium stage, his ears alert, his front paws in alignment. The dog tilted his head even so slightly and looked his eye and locked, excuse me, his eyes on the police chief who stood at the podium. From his seat in the front row, Ben thought his chest might burst with pride. Even though he'd known Hero since he was a baby, Ben was still totally blown away by what a great dog Hero was. Everything about Hero, a black Labrador, was poised and distinguished. Even his thick, dark coat was extra shiny. Ben's mom had insisted on taking him to the groomer yesterday. Hero as usual, had gone without complaint. He even let Ben's little sister, Erin, put a giant bow on his collar. Ben had taken it off that morning before the ceremony. He didn't think Mississippi's most decorated police dog needed to show up for his retirement ceremony with a floppy bow on his neck. Ben squeezed Erin's tiny hand in his and stood up as straight as he could. Everyone was dressed up for the special occasion, and Ben felt like a man in his new suit. His mom, Jessica, wiped a tear from her eye. She had straightened Ben's tie about a million times that morning before they left the house. Noah, Ben's best friend, fidgeted in his stiff shirt. He was used to playing baseball with Ben, not dressing up, but even he was caught up in the moment. Ben studied his dad and hero on the stage at the front of the room. His dad, Sergeant David Dave Landry, technically held Hero's leash in one hand. The badges and medals on his dad's dress uniform glinted every time the photographer's flash went off. His dad wore a serious expression, but, men, but Ben could see that his eyes were a little damp too. Hero was more than just a regular police dog in the K-9 unit. He was also trained as a search and rescue dog. Hero and Ben's dad had been partners on the Gulfport Police Force for eight years. In that time, Hero had busted a lot of criminals and saved a lot of lives, including Ben's. When Ben was only six, he had wandered away from the house and walked a couple of miles along a nearby creek. He threw small rocks into the air, then swung at them with sticks playing baseball. He was so caught up in his game that he didn't realize the sun was going down until he looked up and it was dark. He didn't know which way was home. Ben was terrified. Every tree looked exactly the same. He couldn't see the path. He tried to find his way back, but he only got more lost. Finally, he sank down at the base of a tree, pulled his arms into his t-shirt for warmth and sobbed. He thought he would never see his family again. Then, all of a sudden, Hero had bounded through the darkness and found Ben. The dog had lit the tears right off his face, even though it was almost seven years later. <clears throat> even though it was almost seven years later, Ben could still remember the feel of Hero's warm fur in the cold night. Ben and his family had never gotten that Hero had never forgotten that Hero saved Ben's life. And apparently, neither had Hero. After that night in the woods, Whenever Hero and Ben were together, Hero followed Ben everywhere, like he was protecting him. Every chance he got, Ben's dad would bring Hero to the house to visit Ben. The dog always went straight upstairs to Ben's room, where he'd sit for hours and patiently listen to Ben explain the rules of baseball. For Ben, it was like a dream come true. His two favorite things, Hero and baseball, together in one place. We owe Hero a great debt, the police chief said into the microphone. This town has never seen such a skilled police dog. We can't even count the number of people he's saved or bad guys he's caught. 
than when we can say that every time he was on the job, he amazed us. After a tornado tore up part of our town two years ago, Hero was the first one on the job every morning and the last one to leave at night. He knew every nook and cranny of the rubble, and he saved the lives of several of our friends and neighbors who were buried under the ruins of their own houses. The chief looked down at Hero appreciatively. I watched them pull a man out of the destruction, the chief went on, a man who feared he may never see, his, see daylight again. Well, he is alive today because of Hero. I am humbled by this great creature. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And now, the chief, sa chief said, after many years of service to our community, it is time for Hero to enjoy himself a little. We're sad to see him go, of course, but we feel like Hero has earned the chance to retire and not have to show up to work every day like the rest of us. The crowd laughed. The chief stepped forward and hung a huge, wide ribbon around the dog's neck. At the end, dangled a shiny, round medal. Hero, on behalf of the city of Gulfport, Gulfport, Mississippi, I am proud to award you this Medal of Honor for distinguished service. Thank you, sir. Hero thumped his long, curving tail. He tilted his head up at the chief and let out a long, woof! Then he opened his mouth and panted a little. Look, Aaron said, Hero is smiling. Ben, his parents, his sister, and Noah all cheered. Yay! The rest of the room burst into applause. Ben's dad stepped down from the small stage, and Hero locked along after him. Ben, his mom, and his sister encircled them in a big group hug. After a moment, Ben dropped to his knees and wrapped his arm around Hero's neck. I'm going to miss you, pal, he said. The group went quiet. The day was a celebration, but it was also bittersweet. Like most retired police dogs in the area, Hero was going to work for a private security company, doing some light duty. They didn't know how often or if they'd get to see him. Ben stood up. Sorry, he said sheepishly. I didn't mean to bring everybody down. Ben's dad exchanged a look with Ben's mom. She nodded. His dad turned and looked Ben square in the eye. Without a word, he handed Ben the loop at the end of Hero's leash. Hero is yours now, son, Ben's dad said. Wait, what do you mean, Ben asked in total surprise. You're growing up, his dad said, and we feel like you're ready to take on more responsibility. Ben tried to understand what his dad was saying. Are you serious? You're saying that Hero is really my dog? His dad nodded. Ben, but... What about the security company, Ben asked. Not Hero, his dad replied. This is a good dog who saved a lot of lives, and one of those lives was pretty important to me. The department knows how special Hero is to our family. They agreed that he deserves only the best, and that means he gets to come live with the Landry family. Taking care of Hero will be your opportunity to show us what you're made of. Yes, Ben blurted out. I mean, okay, Dad. I can do that. I'll do that. Ben was too excited to think, let alone speak. Hero was his. He looked at Noah to see if he was hearing this or if Ben was just dreaming the whole thing. Noah wore a huge happy grin and high-fived him. Now you'll have someone to catch your fly balls, Ben, his best friend teased. Ben's mom hugged him tight. But listen, honey, his mom said, to keep Hero, you have to keep your grades up and not fall behind in any classes. Absolutely, Mom. And do all your chores. I promise I'll do them, Mom. I'll do anything. His parents looked at him with a funny expression on their face. Like a mixture of pride and happiness, plus a tiny drop of weepiness, all at once. Ben knew it would be more work than, it was used to, than he was used to. Taking care of a dog wasn't always easy, and taking care of a hero dog meant that much more pressure. His stomach felt jittery. He smiled to cover his nerves. I know you can do it, Ben, his mom said. She squeezed his shoulders. Thanks, Mom, Ben said, hoping she was right. Ben looked down at Hero, who sat patiently. His medal draped across his soft, black chest. Hero snapped his mouth shut and tilted his head back to look at Ben. Ben put his head on the dog's head. His dog's head, he reminded himself. It felt warm and solid under his palm. 
In his other hand, he gripped the leash. The leather rope felt heavy, full of promise and responsibility. Hero nudged Ben's hand and gave his fingers a lick. It was almost like Hero understood who his new owner was. Ben wanted to pinch himself. Hero was coming home with him for good. As they walked to the car, Hero moved with precision, keeping perfect pace with Ben. Lean yet muscular, Hero was a big dog, but in total control of his body. Ben wanted to try something out. He stopped short. The dog stopped at almost exactly the same instant and immediately sat down at Ben's side. Ben stepped forward quickly. Hero hopped up, moved in step with him, then stopped. Hero froze and sat down in one fluid motion. It's like he knows I'm going to stop before I do, he thought. Ben's dad was walking a few feet ahead of them. He turned around and watched Ben and Hero over his shoulder. He's good, right, son? Ben nodded in amazement. No kidding, dad. How does he do it? His dad chuckled. He just does. It's what he's trained to do. But he was born that way. Hero has always been a natural. Ben leaned down and touched his nose to Hero's. Hero snuffed, snuffled Ben's face and looked up at him with big brown eyes. It's you and me now, Hero, Ben said with a grin. All right, guys, that was chapter, that was our prologue. All right, so I'm going to attach our WH questions. Okay, so we, at least we should be able to identify who our characters are or who. Um, you should be able to identify um, the characters and what was happening in chapter one. I'll send some questions out as well. If you would like to answer them, that would be great because we're going to talk about it in our session. So this concludes the prologue, okay?